Hello, my name is Ethan, and welcome back to another episode of Path of Exile Harvest League. Well, it's kind of over. We're going on to Heist League now. Should I just start saying Heist? Hmm. Nah, we'll, li we'll live it while we can, you know? So, what we have here, guys, is uh, I was looking at stuff, and I want to know more Heist stuff, and I really want to get into the Heist and just, like, r get as much information as I can before so we're prepared as much as possible. And so, personally... I saw that they did a heist FAQ and read it AMA and I said, man, I really want to read this. And then I quickly did this and said, oh shit, that's a lot more than I thought it would be. I want to share this with people. And so instead of reading it on my own, I'm going to read it with you guys and then discuss some stuff. And obviously we're going to learn a lot because this is literally answering perfect questions for how stuff works, which is what I need. So it says, yesterday we revealed the details of our September expansion, Path of Exile Heist. Nice. Yeah, it was awesome. We've gathered the answers to the most commonly asked questions and put them into one place for you to per per use. Before you dive in, we wanted to announce that it's that this Thursday, AMA, to talk about all things heist and the process of making Path of Exile and come join us. Okay. So this isn't the first, this is just frequently asked questions. Next is an AMA on Reddit. Okay. So you guys should do that on Thursday at 3 p.m. PDD. Okay. Where do you get markers, contracts, and blueprints from? All three drop from monsters throughout the world, including in Delves. And the Labyrinth? Holy shit! Wait! Ha, uh, Blight? You can also get blueprints, grand heist from contracts. Okay, yeah, the blueprint is the big one, but only from contracts, which you get contracts from... Oh, wait, all three. You can also get blueprints from contract. Oh, shit, they all drop from everywhere. Oh, my God. If you successfully complete a heist and turn in the artifact, you will also receive... A sum of markers greater than you paid to run the heist. Yeah, that we saw that. That's nice. That makes sense. Since you can fail them. What do artifacts do? Artifacts are the main objective from a non-grand heist. Okay. The artifact you're seeking will be shown on the contract before the heist commences. If you complete the heist successfully with the artifact in hand, you can turn it into Faustus. That's the cell dude. The fence at the rogue harbor in exchange for a sum of markers greater than you paid to run the heist. Artifacts do not have any other gameplay function. Okay, so it's just straight up getting more money. You can turn your things into a event to do to get more. Okay, what's the difference between a contract and a blueprint? <laughs> Contracts are needed to run heists, and blueprints are needed to run grand heists. Yep. To run a contract, you'll need to take it to Adia, the Wayfinder, in the Rogue Harbor. You'll pay her a sum of markers to arrange the heist, allow you to select which specialized rogue you'd like to take with you and handle transportation. Contracts can be crafted if desired to increase the difficulty and re reward much like maps. Yeah, you can Alcum, Alt, Beyond, maybe. To run a grand heist, you'll need to pay what Dude, imagine Nemesis. To run a grand heist, you'll need to pay Wakano, the barber in markers, for the intel he's received from your earlier heists. This intel can reveal escape routes, routes, reward rooms, and more. Reveal as much as you desire, or as much as you can afford, and then take the blueprint to the planning room in the Rogue Harbor, where Kure, the administrator, will help you arrange which NPCs you would like to take with you and confirm the blueprint. So... This sounds like the, you have a blueprint and your map almost depends on how much you actually know of the of the blueprint of the heist of the grand heist you're about to do is based on how much you want to unlock. You don't have to. You could just go. You could blind unidentified grand heist. <laughs> okay. At this point, you can either trade the blueprint to another player if you'd like, or take it to an idea to arrange transportation and begin the grand heist. True, so you could sell heist at any. You can sell the bl the blueprints at any point, any point in unveiling. Any point, it could be completely revealed, or it could be not revealed at all. It could have a little bit revealed. You could trade them. There are, so yeah, you could set up a grand heist for somebody else and then give it to them. So like, you have a streamer and you could set up a heist you want to see them do. And you give it to them. 
Cool. There are some gameplay differences between contracts and blueprints, but the main difference is that contracts lay the groundwork for grand heists and yield markers and other regular Path of Exile items as rewards, while grand heists yield exclusive rewards. These can include trinkets, alternate quality gems, rare body armor, and weapons with enchantments, experimented base types, and replica unique items. That's insane! Wait, so you have to do grand heists to do all the cool shit. Okay. What actions affect the alert level? Alert level is affected by killing guards. So I want to address this right now. I saw some stuff with Chris Wilson. I don't think that we're going to have a problem with this because it sounds, it seemed like if you open a room, you're probably going to kill all the things inside that room and that's fine. And that it's the stealth mechanic and alert level is more about opening the rooms. Like you don't open all the rooms. You don't open all the chests. You don't open all the side patches, all the ro Yeah, you want to be selective. The, the, that's basically what alert is doing. It's not that it'll fuck specifically minion builds over by killing guards. It's that it's going to make you make cho tough choices and put you in tough situations where you probably can set off the alarm and then it'll kick you out and you have to get out really fast and you can't get any more loot so anyways uh killing guard sets up the alert level uh, opening reward chests, opening side passages some rogues when performing their specialized skills killing enemies has a small effect you see uh, while opening side passages and chests can result in a larger increase so they're really making it apparent that minion builds afk builds all this shit isn't gonna be a problem your build killing automatically isn't shouldn't be a problem this means that the main thing you'll need to consider is how much loot you'll want to gather before you reach the artifact we have intentionally designed the league so that you can still kill a lot of monsters and earn a lot of items without worrying about this too much see Awesome, we can play minions, we don't have to worry, our minions are gonna work, and, and the alert level isn't every single thing, it's only some of them. Okay, how much emphasis is put on moving stealthily? You can move through the heights at a relatively normal pace, but once you start nearing the alert level cap, you might want to consider sneaking past some guards in order to avoid triggering the alarm. The main thing you'll need to consider in regards to alert level is how many reward chests you'll want to open on the way to the artifact. Are more rewards worth risking blowing your cover for? What happens when you reach maximum alert level? When you reach the maximum alert level, you'll trigger the alarm. You'll have a brief window to steal as much as you can, including the artifact if you're close enough. Before the facility goes into lockdown you're, and you're swarmed by guards. When the facility is in lockdown, you can't steal anything else. You can still escape with the goods. Oh, you already have if you can fight your way through the guards. Holy shit, that's awesome. If you didn't manage to get the artifact but still managed to escape, then you won't be able to turn a profit on your markers, but you'll still get to keep the other goods you stole. You also won't gain any experience in your rogue skill or gather intel for revealing portions of Grand Heist. That makes sense. So you ha so basically, if you wanted to put it into perspective, you have to run so many regular heists because regular heists are the things basically that progress your uh, Grand Heist which is like getting your rogue skills up and gathering the intel. So if you wanted to compare this to Harvest, this is like touching the seed caches, doing a regular heist. So then you would ask people, do you prefer updating the, the thing, the gameplay by playing the game? Or do you prefer touching the seed cache and running maps as fast as you can to touch the seed cache? Eh, I like the, eh, well, I'm probably going to like the heist a lot more. This is gonna fucking cool. This is cool. So, yeah, you, you have to collect the artifact so you can't just run in there either and just kill monsters and make profit you want to you most likely want to get your artifact to update your experience and your intel um uh, for the grand heist uh there we might reach a point where we're max level and we don't care about the artifact anymore and we don't care about un uh, revealing and we don't care about the experience of our rogue skills and it would just be about playing heist for fun maybe i don't know yeah, we'll see what happens. If you, it's just some predictions based on what it's saying. If you just want regular Path of Exile items and don't want to engage heavily in running heists, it's a viable strategy to simply begin the heist, steal as much as you can until you reach the alert level cap, and then make your escape. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, true. Because if you don't care about the heist, you don't care about the grand heist. You're just playing them for for the loot. It would still be pretty good. Yeah, and you wouldn't have to worry about the mechanic. You're just going in and killing shit and looting. Pog. Note that when you steal the artifact, you'll automatically trigger the alarm. Okay, that's good to know. I was wondering about that. Can I still get the artifact if I cap the alert? No. Oh, you'll have a short window. Okay, I thought you did when you'll trigger the alarm. Brief window. Okay, it said it here. Um, 
if you're close enough. We'll see how short of a window that is. To continue stealing things before the facility goes into lockdown, if you're close enough to the artifact, that this means that you can still grab it before lockdown goes into full effect. There are also mechanisms in play that can extend or modify the amount of alert required to reach oh mechanisms they don't want to spoil it but basically there's we already saw it in the leak it was um a trinket that reduced or it's items that you can put on your team your crew so that they reduce the amount that they increase alert when they do stuff maybe using their skill or maybe we can use a trinket that reduces our alert level or maybe increases the maximum alert of the area um yeah how do minions affect your alert level having a slew of minions potentially means that you'll aggro more guards than other builds would meaning that you'll generate more alert level as you kill as mentioned above raise the alert level by a relatively small amount compared to other other actions during the heist yeah i'm not too worried many guards are also positioned on the other sides of doors letting you choose whether to aggro them or not regardless of whether you have minions yeah is the escape timed? No. There's no timer on your way to the artifact and no timer in your escape. The only element that, that includes a timer is that when the alarm has been triggered. A timer will start to let you know how much time you have left to collect loot before the facility goes into lockdown and you're swarmed by guards. That's nice. I'm fine with that. That makes sense. That's how it should be. How do you fail at a heist? <laughs> a heist attempt is only considered a failure if you die after the lockdown and lose your contraband. If you die after the lockdown is in effect, you won't be able to return to the heist and collect those items, but they can be collected by remaining party members. If you die prior to the lockdown, you can return to the heist. You can somewhat consider it a failed state if you don't reach the artifact because you can't turn it in for a profit and advance your rogue's experience or gather intel from the heist. But if you make it out, you will still get to keep your other rewards. In a grand heist, each wing has its own alert level to manage. So if you fail at one wing, you'll still be able to attempt the others. What? You can also stash your items between wings to lock them. How big is this grand heist? Can guards capture me? No, only kill you. <laughs> I was thinking of Legend of Zelda where the yeah yeah yeah. What is contraband? Items that you collect inside a heist are considered contraband. It's an indicator to show you which items you'll lose if you die within the heist. All items you manage to take with you to take with you will lose the contraband indicator when you leave the heist. What is intel? Intel is something that's gained automatically when you turned in artifacts you've received retrieved from heist and is essential in the planning of grand heists. To use the intel that has been gathered from heist you've run, simply take the blueprint to Wakano, the barber, and pay him in both intel and markers to reveal bar parts of the blueprint for you. So basically, this is like um, the syndicate, betrayal, and you're, you have your encounters with them, with the heist, and then you're getting intel for the really big heist and then the really big heist is turning into wings of multiple shit where the the grand heist is like the blue like that ba page basically of all the elaborate fucking connections and all the cool complicated shit the grand heist is everything um yeah to use the intel that has been gathered from heist you've run simply take the blueprint of the thing and pay him to reveal parts of the blueprint for you that's really cool all right, Wakano. Five. I saw that. Five. It might cost five. Whatever that means. How much of a blueprint do you have to reveal before you can run a grand heist? You can completely skip revealing anything on the blueprint and jump right to locking in which NPCs you'll take, but you'll miss out on a lot of the value of the blueprint in doing so. Why? You can unlock as much as you want or can afford. The more you unlock, the more you'll reap from your grand har 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 heist. Why? But why? Can you tell what rewards you'll get before you run a heist? Grand heist. A revealed blueprint will indicate which rewards are available from curio displays, but you won't be able to tell what rewards are in the chest lockers and side rooms along the way. That makes sense. So you know the big loot. What things should I pay attention to if I want to be successful at heist? This is so much, man. Gather markers. <laughs> You'll get these from regular monsters throughout the game and from turning in artifacts after you complete heist. These are essential for paying rogues to assist you with heist and to reveal details of a blueprint for grand heist. Completing heist is also essential 
for gaining in intel and increasing rogue skill experience. There's also important they are they're also important for being able to run grand heists. Rogue skill experience improves their ability to perform certain tasks during heists. Cool. Heist and grand heist also require rogues with a specific level of skill in certain areas. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, when you plan contracts and blueprints, you'll have an interface which allows you to pick which rogue has the appropriate skill level for the job required. This means you won't have to use your memory to know which it, who is right for the what job. So basically also for these unidentified um grand heists, you'll already know what skill requirements you have because they can't not tell you and then you not have the correct person for the fucking job because that would be stupid. So they're going to tell us what requirement there is for the for the grand heist so it might give away some indicators of what is actually on the map just based on what you have as your um requirement for skill but yeah and then that might actually lead to like what you have but we don't know what those even are yet so it's irrelevant until we get to play with it a bit or we know what eat what the entire picture looks like because then maybe we'll be yeah we'll be able to get like figure out if the grand heist was even worth it or worth selling <laughs> uh or unveiling there we might be able to tell a lot of information just from the requirements maybe of skills or rooms and rewards from the different things um, there's a bonus. There are bonus bonus things to consider, like using a thief's trinket to change which rewards you receive from a heist or rogue equipment to improve their skills. But they are not fundamental to your success. True. The main thing you need to do is complete regular heist by reaching the artifact and turning it in for profit. <laughs> this is the basic thing. They mean not the main. Th this is yeah. That, okay. Okay. Wait. Ah. That's what I. That's what I said. Actually, this is like. The fucking killing the people in the betrayal, uh, and do it in making them like give information and research and blah blah, or touching the seed cash, or this is the sulfur, sulfur. Okay, what are thieves' trinkets? These these are items you can find in heists which use a new equipment slot. They effectively allow you to invest in increasing or modifying the rewards from heists without sacrificing an equipment slot from your build. They always drop corrupted so they can't be crafted. They only affect heist related drops and don't do anything outside of heists. How do I get to the rogue harbor? Use a marker in town or in your hideout. <laughs> Every time? Every time? No waypoint? How do I get out of the rogue harbor? Do I have to keep the rogues alive? No, their skills can be interrupted by incoming attacks, so it's good to keep killing guards before they begin, but you do not need to protect them. Oh, they'll be protected. Can I change how fast they perform their skills? These are relatively quick by default to ensure smooth gameplay, but you can make it even faster by leveling their skills or, skills or equipping items to, I, to them that have the appropriate mods. The speed at which rogues perform their skills gets slower and harder higher level heists but get faster as they level up and even faster as you improve their equipment so it can end up overall faster than their base speed. Do rogues lose or reset their progress at any any point? They cannot lose progress or experience once they've gained it. There is no reset point. Awesome. Is my heist intel and my rogue skill experience shared between my characters? Yes. Awesome. How many specialized rogue skills are there? There are 13 different rogue and 9 different field skills. What the fuck? I was counting like seven. How many skills do rogues have? Each rogue has one main skill and up to thir three alternate skills. Their main skill is their specialty, has a higher experience cap than their secondary skill. Some rogues share their skills. Do all three of a rogue's skills ex gain experience when you complete a heist? No, just the skill they utilized on the heist. How many rogues can come with you? Only one rogue can assist you on a heist. In a grand heist, you can have up to three rogues per wing. If you pay to reveal elements of a blueprint, you'll typically have several wings available to run. Do I automatically have access to all rogues? When you first arrive at the rogue harbor, You'll have all the administrative rogues and some of the active rogues. The more you progress in heist, the more rogues will show up and be able to be available to assist you. That's sick. How does party play work in heist? Oh shit. When you run a heist in a party, multiple artifacts will be available to steal assigned to each party member. You'll also each gain intel and rogue experience if you succeed at the heist. This is the best fucking holy shit. This is the best league they've ever made. Another benefit is that if you die and drop your con contraband, your party member can collect it for you and then share it if they're nice. 
Oh my god, this is so good. You can carry people. Oh my god, you can even pool your intel resources by revealing part of the blueprint and passing it to your party members to reveal even more of it. Oh my- yeah, that, obviously, because they're tradable. <laughs> you don't- it doesn't even have to be a party member. You could do this with a random person. Can I chain heist or heist self-sustaining? You can store your high contracts and save them up to binge heist when you're ready. There's not a lot of value in hoarding low-level contracts as you'll out-level them, but you can also trade them to other players if you no longer need them. If you trade for more contracts, you can potentially run heist content exclusively. You'll also acquire more contracts and blueprints from heist. Wait, if you trade for more contracts, you can potentially run heist exclusively. That's trading. That's not self-sustaining. You can chain them, sure. You'll also acquire more contracts and blueprints from Heist. So potentially self-sustaining, but most likely not because it would break the game. How often will I complete a Heist or Grand Heist? Buy them, dude. You'll have to access one contract per area on average, but the amount you get is affected by standard drop multipliers. You can get many per area in well-rolled maps. You, you'll access a blueprint for a grand heist approximately once per act or around every 12 maps. It's a similar level of content access to incursions on the Temple of Atzol, except you can wait and run them when you feel like it without losing progress. This is better than that because instead of Temple of Atzol, we actually have real rooms that we care about and loot that'll feel unique sorry but like it's like double corruptions and the norm does heist also introduce new bosses yes but we'll let you find out about them firsthand nice we already saw the thing behind in the fucking doorway as she said there's nothing that could go wrong in this big boss is just sitting there does impending doom work with curses cast by bane it Currently doesn't, but that's not 100% locked in. Cast by Bane? We... Let me go look. Bane. Chaos, trigger, spell, AoE, duration, curse is an active gem that applies a debuff to enemies, which deals chaos damage. Link curses are also applied to uh, those enemies. The debuff deals more damage and lasts longer for each curse applied this way. Bane does not count toward the toward the curse limit. What the fuck? Wait, I didn't know. That's sick. Uh, cool. If that does, patch notes. Tuesday fifteenth, uh, September PDD, which is Wednesday sixteen. NZT. Cool. Either way, that's all of the FAQ. I might do this again with the AMA if you guys like this. I like this because obviously I keep myself up to date. Um, I I now know all this information. We know where to get markers, contracts, and blueprints. We know what the artifacts do and why why we should get them and what importance the regular heist plays in the big grand scheme of contracts and blueprints. Uh, we want we know if alert level doesn't really matter. We know that the stealthiness doesn't matter. We know that our minions don't matter, and that if we reach max, we just get to leave with our loot. Who cares? We fight our way out. Minions won't matter. Cap up. And uh, I don't think all of the missions are are stealthy and alert level. I think that this is just some of them are going to be stealthy and alert, and we don't know what percentage yet. It could be ten. It could be fifty. I don't know. Either way, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to take this opportunity to thank my patron and my YouTube members who financially support the channel. Um, can't do this without you guys. Thank you to anyone new who joins the patron of the YouTube members today. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!